from your kind of background, it's impossible to rise again. You are rising again. Holy Spirit and the Word. The world and the Holy Spirit are members of the Godhead. They belong to the Trinity, the world and the Holy Spirit. In 1 John 5, 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Word and the Holy Spirit are indispensable to each other. They are interdependent. Now hear this. At creation, they were all involved. In the beginning, God created the heavens and what? The earth. The earth was without form and void. The Spirit moved. Is that true? Look at the Holy Spirit. And God said the Word. The Word and the Spirit were involved. In Genesis chapter 1 for the entire creation. Is that true? There are two unbeatable forces. The world and the spirit. Both at work can cause any change in your life. They guarantee undeniable results. But hear this. Who is the world? Who is the world? The word is not a literal speech sound, like as I'm talking. That's not the word. The word is God. The word is what? The word is not what I'm speaking. It's not the sound you make. Because if I say the word, some of them say, well, the word is just for you to speak. The word is God. Now, John 1.1, 1, 1, look at this scripture. They are with you together, want to go. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the world was God. So the world is God. Is that clear, sir? Before Jesus came to the earth, he was the word. Listen. Before Jesus became, we say, see Jesus, see Jesus. First and foremost, Jesus was the word. John, back again, 1-1. One, one. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. But the Word had to come on earth to deliver man. Is that clear, sir? So what happened is this. To come on earth, the Word has to take a human form. Listen where I'm going. So the Word had to be planted in the womb of a woman called Mary. And then the world became human called Jesus. John 1, 14. Look at what it says. And the word was made flesh. Who is the flesh? Jesus. And dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory of the Holy for God of the Father, from the and truth. So in the beginning, it was God the Father, God the Word, God, the Holy Ghost. Then when the word became flesh, we now have God, the Son. I mean, understand it. Glory to God. When Jesus was physically on the earth, it was him, the word, walking with the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus is in heaven. Is that clear? So now the world has to walk with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was on earth, so he walked with the Holy Spirit. Now he's gone. Now, so this world now, because it's no more here. So now the world, which you quote, now has to walk with the Holy Spirit. Are you getting how it is? I don't understand it. I'm sure you're not confused. Okay. Because in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, it said... All scriptures given by inspiration of God has provided for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 
that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God's word is full of wisdom and power. First Corinthians 1 24. Now, we know who the word is now, so then who is the Holy Spirit? Because if you don't know the person, you'll be confusing the two. I don't want to assume that everybody knows who the Holy Spirit is. We now know who the word is, that the word is who? Jesus. Is that true? Then who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not a thing. It's not wind, dove, or fire. He is a person. He's a divine person with feelings. He has emotions. He speaks. He hears. He thinks. He laughs. He can be grieved. You can grieve him. Ephesians 4 verse 30. He teaches. He does what? The Holy Ghost teaches. John 14 verse 26. He guides. John 16 verse 13. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. He's the most wonderful person on earth. But if you don't understand who he is, you can't enjoy Christianity. When you surrender to him, his love, his will, and his direction, <laughs> your life becomes very colorful. And today, you will enjoy who he is in your life. One of the secrets of the exploits of my life and this ministry is my friendship and fellowship with him. I understand him. He talks to me as a man talks to his friend. Glory to God. If you read John 14, 16 and 17, you see it. It's in you. It's for you. It's with you. True? Hmm? I pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even is full of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seared him not, not knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth what? With you and shall be in you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Let me say this to you. What makes you a child of God is the Holy Spirit in you. Is the Holy Spirit. Without him in you, you are not a child of God. Galatians 6 verse 4. And let me say this, without the Holy Spirit, you'll be limited as a child of God. You'll be very limited. Your Christianity will be theoretical. Everything about you will be theology. It will be grammar without effect. It will be church without results. It will be religion without life. I repeat. Without the Holy Spirit, it will be church without a faith. It will be religion without life. It will be activities without results. There will be no reflection of Christianity without him. That's why you need to know him and the world. Say so here. Some important things the Holy Spirit does with the word. What are the important things the Holy Spirit does what? With the word of God. Number one, he expels the word. Second Timothy 3, 16, all scripture, all what? Is given by the inspiration. It's the one that inspires the word. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 20, 21, I'm going to read the Passion Translation. You must understand this at the outset. Interpretation of scriptural prophecy requires woe. Well, without him, you will interpret the Bible upside down. Hello? It said interpretation of prophecy, scriptural prophecy, requires who? That's why somebody will read the Bible and interpret it upside down. Have you met theologians? They turn the Bible upside down. Without the Holy Spirit, you will interpret this book upside down. So I hear. It said. 
Interpreting your scriptural prophecy requests the Holy Spirit, for it does not originate from someone's own work. It is not your own imagination. No true prophecy comes from human initiative, but it is inspired by the moving of the Holy Spirit upon those who spoke the message that came from God. Shout hallelujah. So, it's the one that can interpret the Bible to you. That's why you need him to understand the word. So, Holy Spirit, from today, inspire me as I study in the name of Jesus. That's why somebody in the Bible say, oh, I don't understand what I read though. Because you have not met the one who inspires you to understand. You get it clear? That's what we're teaching. He says, I this you are talking. I, I read this book. I read this book. I can't even understand what I read. You just were reading like literature textbook. But from this day, he will inspire you. Yeah. Number two. The Holy Spirit teaches you the word. Number two. It teaches what? It teaches you the word. He is the best teacher of the word because he is the author. He is the best and greatest teacher on earth. He knows and teaches all things. Hear this. No mortal man knows all things except him. Is dependable and perfect teacher. It teaches their error free. They are what? You can count on him to teach you. John 14, 26. But the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strength, and standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sent in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you what? Including Bible. Including your subjects in school. He will teach you how many things? All things. And from today, he will teach you. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Now when he teaches you, you can't fail if he's one teaching you. He will teach you how many things? All things. Stay tuned. David Ibiumi will be right back. Follow David Ibiumi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living. Via Instagram at David underscore Ibiumi. Twitter at David Ibiumi. Facebook at David Ibiumi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiumi podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcast, and much more. God bless you. Welcome to Our Salvation with David Ibiumi. You can never have a blackout with the Holy Spirit. I went to the time hall, I had blackout because your Holy Ghost out. You don't know him. He will bring something you have read. He will tell you, this is it. He will bring it. Pop, pop. He will bring it back like the sun. Sun, sun. To your remembrance. When you read Bible, he's one I will teach you. Because most times, many of us say the truth. When we read Bible, no one would understand. The author is not with you. You don't even invite him. Even when you're reading Bible, just say, Matthew chapter 1. Okay. I don't tire. I don't tire. Matthew. Matthew. The book of Genesis. Because the one who is the teacher is not there. But when is the one you are conscious of, he will begin to teach you. you say, this is what I mean. This is what I'm saying. This what, look, let me tell students, before you go any day to school, children hear me, part of your prayers on your own, say, Holy Spirit, teach me as I go. 
The lecturer will be doing like this, teaching you, you will understand that the frequency beyond the lecturer. That is, it will teach you in a way that even you will say, wow. It will teach you everything, this, including your subject. I've shared my testimony with you. I went to London for a course, and the white British man who was teaching me said, well, it will take you a full day and the following day before we are round off, and then by Thursday we can summarize about two days full lectures. He's been teaching different people, medical doctors, professors, and he said, I've been here for 30 something years doing this job. And we are learning, and three hours I was done. Before I started, I said, the Spirit, teach me. I didn't say he should teach me. So before he opened his mouth, I was understanding the frequency beyond human comprehension. So he stopped, he said, excuse me, I've taught here for years, you are the fastest. So I smiled. He couldn't know where I'm coming from. It's not because I'm a pastor, but I caged the teacher beyond his own teaching. Well, somebody can be teaching you and you may not understand what he's teaching. So when you have told him to teach you, but he has to also make you understand. So the two go together. Many people are tough, but they lack understanding. Everybody in the class, even those who fail, they taught them. There was nobody who failed as that they did not teach. <laughs> but the man did not have what? Number three, the Holy Spirit gives understanding of the word. So we don't stop our teaching because I can teach you and you don't understand what I'm teaching. He teaches, but you need what? Understanding. Important thing the Holy Spirit does with the word, it does what? It gives us understanding of the word. Understanding of God's word is very important in our walk with God. Proverbs 4, verse 7. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing, and with all you have gotten, get what? Discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. But the King James said, with all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Without understanding, you can't have faith in God and his word. Is that through faith coming by? And hearing the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. But that second hearing is understanding. It takes hearing the word with understanding to generate faith. Is that clear? God's word is light that can shatter darkness. But without understanding, you can't shatter darkness. Now listen. Why you need him is this. Many people have heard Matthew 8, 17. Is that true? It was the Holy Ghost that gave me understanding of Matthew 8, 17 that made me shatter sickness. Is that clear? It can be teaching you if you don't understand, you still be wallowed. That people are sick. Yet I've been quoting Matthew 8, 17. He gave me understanding that if Jesus took, look, if he's teaching you and you understand, your Christianity will turn. The day you have understanding of any subject from God's word, your life will turn. And I pray you have understanding now as I'm speaking. Amen. By the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. He taught me Matthew 8, what? He gave me understanding that himself took. Now, listen. No matter the health thing, when I sit down on Matthew 8, 17, I'll get myself back. It's so strange. So what? If I sit on Matthew 8, 17 and I began to meditate, himself took, no matter how my body does, I meditate, I just give me time, I meditate, that my body must bang back. That's how. He's the one that gives you understanding. Say so here. With that understanding of the world, there'll be no difference between you and the unbelievers. Because that you come to church does not mean you understand Bible. He's the one that gives you the. He said, "The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead." Proverbs to the one verse sixteen. What is understanding of God's word? Understanding of God's word simply means seeing what God is saying, seeing what God is. That's what understanding is. Seeing what God is saying. You know, you can be saying something and somebody may not understand what you're saying. Holy 
Spirit has the principal ministry of a light the eyes of understanding to see what God is saying in scriptures. It's not here. Because he knows the mind of God. Now, I have read Matthew 16, verse 18. I'll build my church. And the gates of Asher, what? Until the Holy Spirit gave me specific understanding that the owner of the church is who? Jesus. So fighting salvation ministries, you are fighting his church. Now, he gave me what? Understand. So I'm not afraid when someone says I'll fight salvation, I'll just leave you with the owner. He gave me understanding that I am not the owner. You will never hear in my mouth my church. He gave me understanding that the owner of the church is who? Jesus. He gave me understanding. And that anybody trying to fight salvation ministries, you're fighting the owner who can break you to power. He will grind you. That's why any attempt to fight his church, the person can't survive. He gave me on that what? Understand that. So here. I pray this month you have understanding of a particular thing in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of what? Understanding. According to the scriptures. And it shall make you a quick what? Job 32 verse 8. But there is a spirit in man and the expression of the Almighty giveth them what? Understand of God's word is vital because it will profit you according to your level of and the Holy Ghost one that will give you that understanding. Matthew 13, verse 23. Now, if you have understanding of prosperity, do I have understanding? There's no devil that can make you poor. Believe you me, if you have understanding of what I understand of prosperity, even 50%, no devil, no economy can make you poor. There's no way you can be saying things are tough. They are never tough. It can never be tough for me. Not because of your offering. Because of my understanding based on the things the Holy Spirit has showed me from God's word. So I hear. But someone says things are really tough for Things are tough. They are tough because you don't have understanding of this word. They teach, teach, teach. You say, hmm. No more thing, Papa, they talk for George. Oh. You know, no, say things tough. You know why? You know, they go market. Does he go to market? He doesn't go to market. You know, the pulpit is smart, is making plim, 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 if I don't have an understanding, okay, why didn't I beg from the days this church? I never had money. I would have been begging. I didn't change my life just because of today. I have never begged any member since this church started. Based on what? I have deep understanding that you are not helping me when I go further. That I'm helping you. You give me offering. You are the one who gets blessed. True? He said, I gave to Papa my heaven open. So you are not helping. My understanding made me. I know that I am not helping the poor. His grace is helping me. But some of them understand this, you know. Every time they say, I'm going to give Papa. We will give Papa. Every time I say, I'm going to give Papa. It lacks understanding. <laughs> That's why you need understanding of the word of God. Say so here. I pray your eyes open. He said, he that receiveth seed to a good ground, Matthew 13, verse 23. Is he that heareth the word, and what? Understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some what? Hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. So, any time you want the word to profit you, who do you depend on now? In the spirit. Never read this Bible without inviting him. most prized possession. 
Your worth to Him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37 God is waiting for you with open arms. Come to him as you are. He will give you life, freedom, peace, transformation. Wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6 in your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comforts, a brook where you can be refreshed with God's word, and a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship, designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone the Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations, and the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today. My God, my God, supply all your needs. Like David Ibiomir to receive daily prayers and prophecies live on Facebook. Like and follow only David Ibiomir's official verified account. Remember, always look out for the verified icon. Join us next time on Our Salvation with David Ibiomir. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.